Seven Days to Die Alpha 20 What an update. From the new and approved textures to the map and zombies, to updated menus and tons of new building blocks to experiment with, this was a wonderful addition to a game we already loved. But sadly, there are two reasons we didn't enjoy this update as much as we'd hoped. Number one, bad configuration. Now, this is by no means the developer's fault. In fact, it's 100% our own. We configured our server in such a way that it would give us slightly more experience than normal. In our minds, this would help us progress to the in-game content slightly quicker, so we didn't have to spend 50 plus hours playing the game to see everything the update had to offer. This ended up backfiring on us by making the game way too easy way too soon. By day 50, we had unlocked everything for ourselves but were still facing beginning stage zombies. This made the game boring and repetitious. Had we known more about the vast number of configuration settings available to us, we would have done things a little differently and scaled things much more evenly. Number 2. Poor Performance During our gameplay, we experienced massive frame drops the closer we were to our home base. Through the magic of editing, most of the performance issues were hidden from any video that I posted. But as you watch the clips in this video, the stuttering, jitteriness, lag, and other performance problems you may see are from the game, not the recording or your internet quality. At times, we saw an average of 9 frames per second while standing in front of our storage boxes, which is barely playable. We're not sure if this is a result of something we did to the structure, or to the map, or the fact that this server is running from Dozer's home computer while he's playing the game. After some testing, we did learn that leaving a filter applied to anything searchable seemed to hurt performance the worst. However, the transition from nighttime to daytime, particularly when the set piano sound played, seemed to trigger this issue as well. Restarting the server and putting certain executable files in a higher priority on Dozer's computer seemed to help a little. It's worth noting, however, that I saw the same issues when running a clone of the server on my own machine, just not as bad. My guess is this is due to the different processors between my machine and Dozer's machine. We never experienced anything like this in the hundreds of hours we played in Alpha 19 under very similar server setups. So we can only assume that this is from a code change between the two updates. With that said, we've decided to move on and let the server die. Recently, we've made some new friends that are interested in joining us on the games that we play. Based on the number of possible players we're going to see in the future, getting a purpose-built hosted server makes more sense than trying to make one out of our basement. But there are so many games out there to choose from, what should we play next? Oh wait, I've got an idea. Hey there! If you made it this far into the video, then you must have liked the video, and I hope you'll take a moment to give it a thumbs up. If you find yourself coming back to watch my content on a regular basis, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notifications whenever I post a new video. See you all in Darkness Falls.